I'm Mick Garris, and this is Trailers from Hell. Our movie this time is The Phantom Planet, and I'm not going to try and argue that it's a good film because it's anything but. But I try and talk about movies that I have some sort of personal attachment to, and believe it or not, The Phantom Planet was one of them. Three, two, in 1961, when The Phantom Planet came out, I was living in a suburb of San Diego called La Mesa at the time. And the long-gone Helix Theater there had unbelievably the world premiere of The Phantom Planet. In fact, as far as I know, it may or may not have been the only time it was shown in a movie theater at all. It's certainly the only world premiere ever held at the Helix, a neighborhood movie house. It was a Saturday matinee and it had been hyped uh, with the stars in attendance, free comic books, goodies, popcorn, all that stuff. So there was no way you could keep this nine-year-old movie fan away. Dean Fredericks was the star and they touted him as the star of Steve Canyon. Well, I wasn't a fan of the Steve Canyon comics and didn't even know they'd made a TV series from it, but that was good enough for me. They had some little guy in a generic space suit and a bubble helmet spouting spaceman gibberish as if he was an alien from the phantom planet just going around going gleep clap gleep clap he's not in the movie had nothing to do with it and i really felt ripped off he was nothing like the solarites they were droopy bug-eyed mutant aliens in the film but he did sign my phantom planet comic book with some weird squiggle that was supposed to be alien-like speaking of the solarites the main hulking mutant was played by none other than richard keel the silver tooth jaws in the james bond movie also in the cast as the supreme alien leader was the venerable character actor Francis X. Bushman, who at his peak during the silent era was advertised as the world's most handsome man. Let's just say that Phantom Planet was not his peak. But he worked constantly in films and television from 1911 or so until he died in 1966. One of the most notable things about the Phantom Planet itself, to me, an asteroid really, it looked like some sort of intergalactic peanut with a, a weird peanut shape. It also had all the uh, mushy, beautiful space babe stuff that a nine-year-old boy had very little interest in. But nice to know they had such professional makeup and hair on the Phantom Planet in 1961. One of my favorite parts, and the memory is still strong after all of these years, was when Dean Fredericks ends up on the peanut planet and shrinks down to six inches from six feet in height. Very similar to what happens to Paul McCartney in Help. Guess it was better for his female counterparts there, where I guess size mattered. Director William Marshall, not the guy who played Blackula, was an actor mostly in French films in the 50s. He only made one or two other pretty obscure movies as a director and actually married Ginger Rogers the same year that he made Phantom Planet. Neither the marriage nor the film succeeded. <laughs> 